Hello everyone, my name is Oquandia and I'm the Solutions Engineer at Electronique. Today we're going to be creating a bot that is going to be using some of our API activities to send an HTTP request to retrieve information about users. This specific API is going to be generating some random credentials that users are able to use. Once we generate those credentials from the HTTP request, I'm then going to be showing you guys how to go in to extract specific data from the JSON format that is retrieved from the API activity. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The first thing that we want to start with here is our programming capabilities. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my programming activities inside of our API activity. Let's go ahead and drag out HTTP requests. Once you drag out the HTTP request activity, you'll see that it'll automatically have a save value to variable tab. You can go ahead and keep this tab here. So I'm going to rename this variable. I'm going to name this my user info. And then I'm going to go into my HTTP request and specify the information. Here I have a sticky note with the URL in which I want to use to get the information from. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and I'm going to paste that URL into the URL field. Now that we have our URL, the next thing we'll need to do is specify our method. Since we want to pull and retrieve information back from this website, we're going to go ahead and hit get. Now that we've specified those parameters, we can go ahead and run this workflow to see the format in which the information is retrieved. So let's go ahead and run this now. Awesome. So now that we've ran that workflow, if we open up the variables tab, this is where we'll be able to see the information which was retrieved from the API HTTP request. This format will be supplied in a JSON format. So to extract the data, you would need to go in and specify what elements from this data you would like to pull. In this case, I'm going to be specifying the email the login information being the unique user ID, the username, and also the password. So let's go ahead and start specifying that information. I'm going to continue to use my user info as a reference to ensure that we are pulling back the right information. So let's get started. The next thing we would need to do here inside of our general activities, we'll go ahead into our logic tools and pull out assign value to variable. That one will be for our email. The next one here will be for our unique user ID. This one will be for our username. And last but not least, this one would be for our password. I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto layout just to give this a clean view. So now that we have our activities laid out here, let's go ahead and start the specifications. I'm going to go ahead and click on the first variable and variable name. I'm going to name this user email. Now that I have that information there, we're always going to want to calculate a value since we'll be creating these variables from the activity being save value to variable user info. This means that we'll be referencing from our user info data. So let's go ahead and start the references. Inside this field, I'm going to go ahead and start and putting user info because that is the main piece of information which we'll be dissecting from. And then I'll insert some brackets here. And since we know from looking at our variable results that results is our starter piece of information. To ensure that we're referencing that correctly, 
we'll go back to our variables inside of user info. And we can see here that results is the start of this information. So since we're not necessarily looking to pull information from this specific area, I'm going to go ahead and specify zero being my next item. So I would go back here, ensure that we're in calculate a value, and then in brackets put zero. The next part of my brackets here, I'll specify the information which I want to pull. This will be email. Now we can go ahead and run this workflow to ensure that it brings back the email. I'm going to detach this here so it can only work on these three first blocks. Let's go ahead and run it. And we can see here that it populated that user email successfully. So now we can go ahead and work on the next block. I'm going to go ahead and attach the next flow connector and start specifying my next pieces of information. As we know, this one here is going to be used for our unique user ID. So again, we're going to be referencing from the user info, ensuring that we're calculating a value. And I'm going to name this user UUID for unique ID and specify user info. We're going to insert our brackets and our quotations and start typing results. Our next set of brackets and then specifying zero. For our next set of brackets, we're going to be specifying login because if we go over here to our variables, open up our user info, we can see that login is where it's about to start populating the information in this set of brackets. So we'll go ahead and specify login and then unique user ID. Click back into this activity. In my next set of brackets here, in quotations is where we would put UUID. Moving forward, we're going to be following the same process. The only things that we're going to be changing here is this last bracket. For this activity, it'll be username, and for this activity, it'll be password. So I'll go ahead and specify those now. User username, and start with our identification, user info, brackets, quotations, results, another set of brackets, zero, another set of brackets, and quotations, login, because it's found within that bracket. And then in our next set of quotations here, and brackets, we'll be specifying username. And last but not least, we'll go in and specify the password. So user password, calculate a value, user info, brackets there, quotations, results. And just ensure that these are double quotations. Brackets zero, brackets quotations, login, and our last set of brackets quotations, password. Now that we have the information identified, we should now be able to pull all of that information back into the variables tab. And each one of these variables should be populated. Let's go ahead and run that workflow now. Perfect. 
And if we open up the console log, we can see that that bot started and ran successfully in one second. And if we open up those variables, we can now see the populated information. So now that you have the information populated, you can use these information data in different areas. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and happy automation.